This is the Cool Photo Tools Podcast, episode number 70, June 6th, 2016. Are you sick of trying to learn all the new photo software? Are you tired of hearing about the next big thing in photography? Well, neither are we. Welcome to Cool Photo Tools with Jay Beerstorff and Rhonda Spencer. Today's program is brought to you by Skillshare. For a limited time, get three months of Skillshare Premium for just 99 cents. Anyone can take an online class, watch video lessons, and create projects. Over 4,000 premium classes. Go to coolphototools.com slash Skillshare for your discount code. That's coolphototools.com slash Skillshare. Welcome, good morning, cool heads, to another episode of Cool Photo Tools. And I'd like to welcome my guest, and well, you're not really a guest, I'm not a guest anymore. I'm to give you a new title. Yeah, you got to call me my, something I'm else. Gonna, welcome Sidekick. My, my co-host, Rhonda Spencer. Hey. In the back there. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, you've just guested too long. You're a permanent yeah, fixture now. So. I am. Um, oh, I got to turn your camera on there once in a while, too. <laughs> So that you actually Where's see, your camera? see me. Here I am. Yeah, for yes. those of you on the uh, on the audio version, you're like, well, I don't really care what camera's aimed at. But for those of you that are watching us on YouTube, yeah, you might want to see. It's us. Like you know, every every episode, Jay's got it takes him a while to warm up to the switcher, That's so he right. knows which which camera to look at <laughs> and uh, which camera to, to turn where? on and so on. All right, so we got a bunch of photo tools as we always do. Mm -hmm. A lot of stuff that. Uh, um, Needs talking about. Somebody's got to do it. It's a tough job. So do you want to start this morning? or no, I'm trying to figure out where it? that came from on my side. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. On your computer? Yeah, your computer's run amok? Um, yeah, it's hey, doing now, its speaking, own little thing. Speaking of c computers running amok, yeah. I had my uh, computer actually um, went down <gasps> last week. I had to buy a new one. No way. For yep, real? For real, yeah. It, um, I, you know, it's usually the power supply. I thought, ah, it's a power supply. Went and got a new power supply. I didn't fix it. And this computer that I was working on was about six years old. I'm thinking, you know what? I'm just throwing good money after bad. <laughs> it's, wow. It's time to just replace it. So I got a new one. So well, it's all wow. good. You know, so what you get? Show. I got a Dell. Of course. You know. Dude, I'm getting a Dell. <laughs> We're kind of Dell people. <laughs> well, you know, I like the, the XPS Studio models because you can get in there and you can replace parts. I like to yeah. replace stuff. Yeah. So the first thing I did was I, I pulled the hard drive out and put an SSD drive in. And so, you know, that makes it much better. I have an XPS too. I like it. Yeah. And the old one that I had, you know, was like a 2010 model and um, gosh, it, it weighed about 300 pounds. They had, you know, it was like the money I'm going to get on it for scrap steel is going to be important. <laughs> really impressive. The new ones are like, are you sure there's anything in here? Yeah. The new ones are a lot more compact. I gave my, my old one to my sister and it was a gaming computer. So it was like, big and you could mm -hmm. pull off the side you could get at everything yep. and now they've compressed everything i pulled the side off of my new one and i went oh you're kidding you know they really did well with making it space but oh if you have to get at anything you have little tiny hands I like my other one because like i said the case was easy you could take had many slots you could just slap, slam hard drives into it hi oh well <laughs> well that's you know i thought uh I thought mine has a lot of space in it. I, you know, I've been in there poking around, and mm -hmm. it's it's pretty good. So, anyway, back to uh, photo stuff directly. We need our computers because we can't run Photoshop or Lightroom or all those yeah. editing tools <laughs> That's without true. them. So we have to talk about computers once in a while. Yeah, because but, that is part of your camera equipment too. I'm sorry, it that, really is. It is okay. So I'm seeing on on your screen. Yeah. That there is. Um, something about uh, Photoshop. Yeah. They've Speaking got, of which, they've got a, a new. Uh, Something that's coming out, not yet. This is still just kind of a sneak peek of it, of their content aware crop. Do you use content aware ever? I do. Yeah, Photoshop? I use it quite a bit. I um, do too. Now, now, content aware crop. This yes, is, this, this is, is the new feature. This is different. And this is only coming out if you subscribe to the CC, the yes. Creative Cloud version, right? Because yes. if you're still hanging in there with, with uh, Photoshop six, Photoshop CS six, they're not that's updating me. that anymore. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> we'll see. I'm hoping that they reconsider for us last six users because most of the stuff they do update for the six, but we'll find out if this actually updates or not. Um, well, I, I can't see why they would. They're not making any more money on that. This is only going to be a creative cloud, but you know, probably it will probably come out like in uh, elements uh, 15 in September. True. Because they, they frequent this. In fact, this is almost in there. If you do a, a, a panorama mm -hmm. in Elements, I'm not sure if this happens in Photoshop CC or not. So I don't do many panoramas. I think it does, where okay. it, it patches in spots. Where, yeah, it, it does the same thing. It, mm -hmm. it basically, it, uh, it fills in if it's not quite straight or it fills in the corners a little bit. So I don't know that this is a totally re-engineered from ground zero uh, feature. but uh, Other than they're, they're touting that it's going to be a little bit faster. And I, I hope that's true. I didn't, I didn't some, think it was bad before. But. Mm, I don't know. If you have big enough stuff, sometimes it takes a little while for it to think. Okay. Well, okay, this is good. But, of course, it depends on not having anything very important near the edges. Which, that's if you're true. most photography composition stuff, that would be true. You don't need stuff near the edges. Right. Or at least your main subject shouldn't be on the edge of your photo. <laughs> just saying. Yeah, if yeah. your head is over here, something is definitely wrong. Yeah, if it's on the edge the, of the picture. If you've got the eyes on the corner, that's not going to work. That probably know. isn't going yeah, to work. You're going to have to do something else with that yeah. one. Yeah. So we'll see. It looks like it will be an interesting. It's nice to see that they're they're working on putting new features in. Indeed. Well, so is this when is this coming out, or is it out? Uh, no, it's just going to be uh, just, some kind of a random just, yeah, upgrade. Yeah, this is they... like when they do their next upgrade. It's just sneak peek, I'm afraid. Okay. So we'll see what happens. Usually, it doesn't take them too long though to to do this stuff. So we'll see what else they do new. Maybe, maybe I'll go the subscription. Not maybe. Could Say it could happen? It could happen. It could happen. Huh? So um, I was looking around here on the uh, this company this website from savage savage which they make uh, background paper mm -hmm. and background paper uh you know which we use in the studio a lot uh they come in these big rolls usually you get white or, and black and there's some other interesting colors but they have come out with some of these that are actually printed so that they have different uh designs or patterns on them that uh Pretty cool looking stuff. You know, there's here's polka dots and they have some kind of out of focus bokeh looking things. And here's the one that's got all kinds of congratulation text and type on it. And this, uh, um, I could, you know, I don't know that these would all be useful, but for children's portraits or maybe even uh, portraits, they're showing some, we're looking at their website here and see they're showing some kids' portraits here on the right. Um, they, these are pretty cute. You know, I mean, I think the parents would be hard pressed not to just give you all their money if you took pictures of their children against these um, kind of fun, um, modern looking hmm, yeah. backgrounds. And these are paper, you know, so uh, they're relatively inexpensive and uh, you can get some of them from Amazon too. You don't have to buy them directly from Savage. And, and of course, usual places like B&H Photo and Adorama have them as well. But, you, and you know, you have to have a pretty big studio because you probably want a few of these. Once you start getting these, right, they're going to be like, mm -mm. yeah. And these aren't, these aren't huge. These are like 53 inches by... Um, uh, what are they, six foot, something like 18 foot, 53 inches by 18 foot. How much are they? Um, it depends where you buy them. Okay. Okay. But they're, I'm thinking they're around 50, 60 bucks, something like that. I'll put that in the show notes in case I'm wrong on the price there. But uh, it's, it, for background paper, that's, that's a bargain. You know, you can use this for a lot of times. And these don't go all the way to the, you could, but they're only 53 inches wide. So typically they're, you're going to shoot three quarters or head and shoulder type portraits with them. So you're not going to, you know, when you put paper on the floor and people step on them, then you have to keep trimming it off because they keep ruining that bottom part of paper. Yeah. And, and yeah. these, you wouldn't have to do that because they, um, they don't hit the floor. They're just for, for shorter portraits. Okay, I'm, I'm done with that one, Ron. You are. Okay, well, hold on. You made me jump forward to something I wasn't going to talk about. But yeah, it's because it I was going to ask you the price, see, and, and, you, and, <laughs> uh, and you, you have to go look that up, so. No, I was, I was going to say... Um, since you, you were talking. Well, I can go ahead with something else I have. No, no, no. I got it. I got oh, okay. it. I just, I had to jump forward because I was going to talk about this a little later. But um, these are Lazo lights. This is a perspective background. So these are 
Okay, so these are the collapsible ones. That, right. That are like, you know, the thing you put in the windshield to keep the sun from coming in. Or a, like a reflector. On a spring. Like when you do reflectors for when you're taking photography. And these same, are... Same sort of thing. So you 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 twist, these are a fabric. Right. They're printed fabric. And you, right. And you twist them up and they fold into a... Uh, nice little circle, little, just like yeah, what you Yeah, circle goes into a case. And those uh-huh. are really hard to fold. I'm, uh, these sizes are five by seven. They take a yeah. little practice. Yeah, it does. And if you do it wrong, you'll break that spring in there, Ugh. and they will never be worth anything again. Mister, ask, ask me how doom I know. and gloom here. <laughs> ask me how I know. <laughs> well, it, you should practice a little bit, otherwise you look like <laughs> you look like a monkey trying to twist something around. Well, yeah, you, you don't want to do it in front of a client. Don't do it in front of a client. Practice, practice. That was one of the first things I learned when I got my big reflector is to stay at home and sit and practice it so you don't look like like an amateur trying to fold the thing up. But uh, I thought these were pretty nice. Yeah, these are, um, so is there a couple different scenes on here? We're right, looking? I you've can got see one on one side and one on the other oh, side. Oh, okay, so. So they're reversible. All right. So and the, they oh. have different, different backgrounds. Um, these, the perspective backgrounds are the ones that have actual photos where it looks like you're you're uh, looking at say look at this close up is that not cool so this is we're looking you at know? kind of a night scene of a of a parisian street mm-hmm. with the lamps on and the dark sky yeah and then the flip side is um, a, a nice a, ivy background I see a grape arbor there maybe uh-huh. and some uh, pastoral grass and trees in the background and things so again these are 5 by 7 foot so right. they're not gonna. You're not gonna do full length with these. No, you're but gonna great do for three headshots. quarters or, or headshot mm-hmm. something like that. Mm-hmm. And like I said, they have a couple different. Here's one. And these are how much are these? Uh two seventeen ninety nine. Okay, and this is we're looking at them from Adorama.com. Yes. and then these are the Lasto Light. This is one. See, they come in several different. Oh yeah, there's so, some some creepy stairs. <laughs> they're not creepy stairs. <laughs> Jeez. And know. and what else? What, what were we looking at besides the creepy stairs? Uh, well, there's there's another one. This one is not creepy stairs. Oh, there's either. A, a stone archway with some grass behind uh-huh. it, and then there's a another stairway. Oh, another here. creepy stairway. That's not a creepy stairway. Oh well, we'll put a link to these in the yeah. show notes, and you yeah. can decide if you think they're creepy or not. <laughs> this the other one that you were asking about was like a a nice little treed walkway. A treed walkway? Well, a walkway with trees on either side. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> okay, I see it's a path. And then there's these, like, these are, yeah. are trees. It's kind of like it's a winter scene. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, they don't have substantial leaves. Okay, well, those are cool. And I think, you know, but it, uh, so about 100 bucks a whack on those. But you could take them with you, though, because they fold up nice, and you wouldn't have to worry about wrinkling them, you know, like the yeah. paper. You have to roll the paper up. And these you can just prop against the wall because they have that spring tension that pops them open. And the paper one, you got to figure out how you're going to hang it up or, or bring yeah. a stand. You could bring a stand. So it's different different ways to do it. Um, you know, it just depends on what floats your boat. Yeah. Okay, Jay, what do you got? Okay, Jay, what do you got? Well, glad you asked. Okay. Uh, this, is, um, this is from... A website called syopt.com, Syopt. Anyway, it's about a uh, Samyang, which is the uh, the lens manufacturer um, that makes uh, high quality lenses for companies that are you know like other companies. Anyway, so they introduced a 14 millimeter and a 50 millimeter lens, and these are for full frame Sony's. They're an E mount, and they're this. This is a Korean company, and these are uh, uh, actually have the um, the autofocus built into them. Sam Yang in the past has had just manual focus lenses, mm. but these are going to be uh, our full. Uh, they'll work just like the lenses you know that you would buy from Sony. Don't have prices on these yet, but uh, you can you can check these out. It's 14 millimeter f 2.8 and a 50 millimeter f 1.4. Wow. Yeah. So if you got a Sony E mount camera, that could be uh, pretty darned exciting to you. All right, Rhonda, what's on yours? Oh, Canon just put out a new lens, and but this is, again, for the mirrorless. I wish they would make this lens for their regular cameras. What makes this so exciting is that the lighting is in the lens. Well, that, that, that's crazy talk. No, I know, isn't it? It's, it's a macro lens with built-in lighting. Now, this is only for their mirrorless cameras. It's only for their mirrorless so cameras. Their, their EFM which mount. Which tells me kind of that they're looking at putting all new technology into their mirrorless 
to kind of get us people to switch over. Well, that would be long overdue, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. And talk about a way to do it, though. Have you seen anything like this where you've got the actual, you've got a flash unit built in the is lens it, so itself? So this is an electronic flash, or is it just LEDs? Um, no, look, see, look, open, look. This is, there's the... Well, I'm, I can't tell. Can't I can't. Tell. I can't tell from uh, looking through my radio speaker. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm doesn't sorry. it say though? It doesn't say. Um, there. no. I just know that it. Well, it's two hundred ninety nine bucks. Yeah. So I don't know. That, that's not going to be much. No. And that's it says, what I new said. New item coming soon. ISTM. This is a Canon EF M twenty eight millimeter f three point five macro IS STM lens. But since it's only for your mirrorless. Cameras, yes, and that's what which made is a me really M series. sad. Does anybody have one of those? I, I mean, don't know. They, I think they sold two. two you know? <laughs> well, if they start making lenses that are like this, they're going to sell more than two. Okay, well, I'm not convinced yet. It doesn't say anywhere on there it's got a flash. It does. Hold on. Let me find. Da, 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 da. Because that's the thing that, that uh, caught me on this. I'm making is that, Rhonda prove this because oh she comes gosh, up with yes. stuff. And I, I'm like, where did you hear that? It doesn't oh, say that on there. you're just giving me a hard time this morning. Well, uh, <laughs> so That's it's like, job, so you know. what's new with that? Yes, hold on. Let me find it. Oh, my goodness. Because that was the one thing that I saw. I thought, wow, that is like so cool. It's got built-in micro lights is what they call it. See, that doesn't mean Two it's a flash. Two built-in miniature micro lights, electronic flash units. Oh, it does say flash. Oh, yes. Okay. All right. Yes. All right. Rhonda proved it to me. Yes. Okay. Canon's stepper motor technology, too. Well, yeah, that's just hey, auto, come on, autofocus come on, stuff here. Come on, come on. And this is, uh, do you ever do anything with Adobe Illustrator? No, I do own an older version of it, but I don't do anything. With Adobe it. Illustrator, you know, is, is a program for making vector graphics, particularly if you do like signage or uh, cut vinyl with it for vinyl signs. Um, the ad advantage in using vector graphics is that they can be enlarged to any size and they don't lose resolution, unlike pixel-based stuff. But Adobe Illustrator is now only available through the Creative Cloud. So here is a free version, an alternative. Hmm. Now, it's not exactly like Adobe Illustrator, but this did get my attention. And this comes to us from graphics.com. And the, uh, the program that they're talking about here is one called Boxy SVG. And that's a graphics format. And so you can take a look at uh, um, this. It's uh, I'll put a link to their website on the uh, on our show notes here. It's at uh, boxy-svg.com, and they it's a it's a desktop vector graphic illustration, and it works on OS X, Linux, uh, uh, Chrome OS, Windows, and it's free, no ads, hidden fees, in-app purchases, or annoying sign-up forms. Hmm. Got to like that. So if you're thinking about doing some vector graphics uh, or in trying it out, uh, Boxy SVG is so where to go. you use vector graphics? I do once in a while. I use, you know what I use is Corel Draw, mm. uh, which it, been around have, for a lot of pay, years. It is. And it's, you know, it's up to version 18 now. Wow. And it's, um, it's not free though. So it's, you know, it's, it's, it's still a couple hundred bucks to update to the new version. Um, and it's, but it's very capable and a lot of sign companies that make signs, uh, use it, but I use it for, for not for photo stuff so much, so much as, uh, um, text-based things, signage, that kind signage. of stuff, signage or, or layouts or books or manuscripts or things where you need to lay out a lot of text, mm -hmm. uh, does that really good. Also, um, where you need to mani manipulate text, you can, you know, move it and skew it and it's vector-based. So you can change the magnification anytime and it doesn't affect the resolution. All right, are you ready for what you got next there? Okay. Am I, am I too soon? You want me to do something else? Mm, I don't care if you want to do something. Oh, cool. yeah. Go ahead. Go Let's ahead. hear you. No, no. <laughs> All right. I okay. see your screen's not moving, so that means I could switch to it here. Okay. So this is an archival uh, Blu-ray DVD. Anybody still use Blu-ray discs anymore? Well, the interesting kind of thing with went, this... All they? right, no, no, no. This... This disc is 100 gigabytes. Oh, you have one of these in your hand. I do. I have one of these in my hand. But it's I not opened one. yet, though. It is not. Um, because I, I just ordered me a Blu-ray uh, read-write to go with this. But um, these are 100 gigabytes, which is an amazing amount. And they're archival. And they tout, after what I read up on all this stuff, that 
they last for like uh, like 75 to 100 years. Right. So 75 years from now. Here we go. Here we go. I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> I, I knew before I ever said this, this is going to happen. He's going to go like, well, who'll have anything? They'll be able to read it because none of the computers will be around that will be able to read that stuff. Somewhere yes. in someone's closet, they will have an old one that they can still read the stuff. I don't know. You'll be, you'll be standing out alone in the nuclear waste <laughs> after the Holocaust <laughs> with that disc in your hand. Going, going. Here's my images. I still have my images on this disc. Well, I, I just liked it because um, if kept correctly, um, you can put a lot of images on here. They're going to last for a very long time. Okay, so this is the verbatim M disc BDXL, mm-hmm. 100 gigabyte, uh, and there's it's at four four times speed, and mm-hmm. it's one get one in a jewel case, and it's like uh, about 21 bucks on yeah. Amazon. Yeah, and we'll link to that in the show notes. So. Well, you know, if us people who are always having hard drive failures, I have a ton of imagery that I I just I don't get rid of my imagery. I've got imagery back from 2006 that I keep on hard drives, but. This disc is going to be meant that I'm going to take a lot of all my older imagery and just burn it to a disc and put this away. Uh, kind of a, another way of saving photos other than just having them on duplicate hard drives around. So how does this cost-wise compare to just buying you know, bare hard drives and storing your data on that? Well, I figure this is 20 bucks. The reader... Um, so how many, how many gigabytes are in two terabytes? Oh my gosh. 2000? Yeah. So this would be more money than buying another hard drive, wouldn't it? I would, but this has a better lifetime than a hard drive. I did the research, at um, least that what they say. How long will a hard drive last? Uh, they say basically usually from five to six years before really? you start having problems. Hmm. So even hmm. with externals. Hmm. So well, even one that you just used as storage and put in the bank vault. Yeah, the they just you run that type of percentage that you may start having issues, and that's that's a little scary when you think about your imagery. I'd rather have it. At least I have it as a backup here, also that I can have put away. Are you going to care about all your images when you're dead? I don't know. Maybe <laughs> you like that one. <laughs> maybe who knows. <laughs> I got a I long way care. to go, Jay. I'm not going any place right away. <laughs> so there. <laughs> okay. I'm well. going to be around to haunt you for a while. Okay. Well, I'll probably go before you go. <laughs> I mean, when I go, why I are why are I we talking care. about going now? Well, because oh my you're God. planning for the future here well, with, with you know with a hundred year storage or whatever it was, seventy five year storage. When you plan for the future, it doesn't mean you're planning to go anywhere. <laughs> it just means you're looking ahead at saving your stuff. Jay starts looking at the future, and he's thinking about taking the next boat out. <laughs> well, it could happen. No. Could happen. No, I can't run all this equipment. You have to be around. Yeah, well, you can hire that done. <laughs> okay, let's move ahead here. <laughs> yeah, get off the depressing stuff. I don't know. I'm, you need to drink more coffee this morning or something. You know, lighten up. Okay. Lighten up. It's okay. Life is good. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not arguing that. I'm just saying, you know. Okay. Just it just brings up bigger questions about By the how way, long should d- your did stuff Did I say last? how much uh, um, an external read write would be for this? The actual. Oh, so you have to actually have a blue day, a blue bit, oh, yeah, a blue ray do. burner to go yeah, with it. Yeah, you have so to have a burner. This is so, not this is not just twenty bucks and you're good to oh, go. No, 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 no. You have to have a blue ray burner also, um, which ran about one hundred and thirty nine dollars. Okay. You know, external. All right. So that's one possibility. Yeah. Okay. Well, and hopefully. 75 years from now, there'll be some device that can read these discs. And, you know, who would have thought we couldn't read Kodak photo CDs anymore? So, Well, there's, there's got to be something. I mean, after all, we still are able to do film. So, there you Yeah, go. That's, that's true. You know, there'll be something, For, some way. Mm-hmm. Okay, we can read this, but it's going to cost you $10,000. Speaking of which, you should talk about that one uh, little thing that you sent me about the guy who... Uh, had all that World War II film stuff. That was really interesting. You ought to share that with people. Yeah, where did I put that? That was really, really cool. Really cool. Okay, uh, that is actually the Rescued Film Project, uh, which is here. And so what they do is that they, they get uh, people send in film, 
uh, that they found someplace. Don't know anything about it, you know. And, and it's the the thing that made the news story on this recently was uh, there was a World War II. Um, I think he had like what fifteen or twenty roles, something oh, like that. Oh, thirty-one. Oh, thirty-one roles. Thirty-one roles from World War II that had never been developed. Didn't and, know what was on it. Yeah, and so they, you know, and they developed them, and not everything came out great, but. Uh, a lot of it did, so it's pretty interesting. You know, you're, it's kind of like a time machine because you've got some of this film that actually can be developed, and uh, you can. You and can he get develops a slice it in his kitchen. I thought that was yeah. very interesting. I used to do that too. Yeah, that's a lot of the. You know, a lot of the video is about um, uh, the process of developing films. So if you've never seen that done, it's kind of interesting. It is. It's very you know, interesting. To me, I fell asleep and fall off my chair. You know, <laughs> I, well, I've done it. Been there, done that a lot of times, you know. That was a long so. Anyway, I, this, I gotta get Jason Ridley I, I, or something. <laughs> we we gotta get you going or something. <laughs> well, I I applaud the guy for doing this. You know, Me this too. is this is really cool, and it's, and it's not just you know important film or World War II stuff. It's just any film. So there's color shots on here, and they in a lot of cases they don't know who it is. You know, where did this come from? I just uh, I should somebody... send him some of my old stuff that I know I've got stuff that I never developed. It's like, <laughs> could you develop this and see what's on this? <laughs> Seventy five years from now, they'll be they'll look at this this Blu ray M disc. You know, and they go, you know, we went through a lot of trouble and we got the images off of this, and there's a bunch of pictures of bugs. <laughs> yeah. It's like, look. There's, Back in 2016, they had they had these bugs. Today, we have some really interesting <laughs> bugs. But. but we've killed most of them now off with raid, and we'll never see them again. <laughs> okay. 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 All right. So, what do you got next? Um, so, I guess we have the Stylus Tough TG Tracker, which is... Wait, wait. Uh, wait, 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 wait. What? What now? I know. The Stylus Tough TG Tracker. What is this, Rhonda? It's, it is like the the GoPro on steroids, kind of. So it is the rugged cam that does all sorts of stuff. I mean, I, like you can take this baby. Let me see if I can go through this. And now, is this a Kickstarter project, or are these already available? No, I think these are already available. This is an action cam? Is that yeah, what we're it's an at? action cam. Uh, but we need more action cams. Well, this one you can actually take and go underwater with, though. I was trying to see. I thought I'd... So had, this is an underwater action cam. Yeah, this is an action cam. Now, they do goes, make housings you can do that with your GoPro. Right. But this baby is a little bit... Um, see, that's why they're showing it with water. I mean... Okay, the, this is... We're looking at this on the Petapixel website uh -huh. here. Uh, who makes this? Is this is this Olympus? This no. no, this is actually it's made by. I think it's made no, by. No, Olympus wants to. Here, I can't right read there. it. Sorry, Olympus. Yeah, it is Olympus. Olympus wants to shake up the action cam market, and they think the Stylus Tough TG Tracker. Okay, it's an Olympus camera. Okay. Clear to me now. How much? Okay. Uh, and why would I care? Why would I care about this instead of just buying the GoPro with a underwater housing well because you've got it all there and this like is that this is a tough little camera okay. i think it's a lot more uh durable than what the gopro so is you don't have to mess with the housing it's yes, already it's, it's all already there. waterproof yes it looks pretty sweet it's got the yes. lcd on it and you can just dive right in so i yeah. know I, I was like really impressed with how, how it many looked. megapixel or oh, hold on or it's just look. video probably just video right here 1080p uh -huh. 60 frames per second and oh, it does it does 4K 4K mm -hmm. video at 30 frames per second? Uh, yeah. Okay. Now let's see what it says here. Waterproof to 100 feet. Mm -hmm. Crushable to 220 pounds of force. Droppable from seven feet. Freeze proof to 14 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, it has a compass. It has a GPS radio. It has a barometric metric pressure sensor. A temperature sensor. And an ultimal uh, say that I can't say it. My my mouth will not wrap around that word right there. What word? Right there. See where my little oh, arrow accelerometer. is. Oh, accelerometer. Yes, thank you. Accelerometer. Accelerometer. See, it's still okay. coming. Well, cool. But that's that seems. And now, price wise, do we have a price on this? I do. Give me one second, please. One okay. One second. One second. One second. I'll give you a second. All but right. You know the clock. Uh, Three hundred and fifty dollars. Okay. All right. So that sounds pretty cool for an underwater cam, which yeah. does all that kind of stuff. And I just it's, thought and it's it was tough and, and 220 
uh, pounds crushable, so I can yes. sit on it without it uh, dissolving. That's, that's good. <laughs> I want to find the one where they Put had it, it underwater. Back okay, here, look at this. Look at that. I thought that was way cool for people that do scuba diving and such. You know. Yeah, it's uh, it has some very good action cam shots that they're showing here, uh, including some very nice ones from underwater. Um, so yeah, if you, that that would be a big advantage to a lot of people because if and you look, do see? water sports. Yeah, it looks like it's even stabilized on the motion. It looks uh, it looks pretty good. Yeah, I was pretty impressed with it. I thought, you know... It, Are you going to get one of these? Because your Nikon know. is back-ordered, right? So. <laughs> I'm afraid I just don't do enough action cam stuff. Yeah, I don't, I'm not very active uh, action cam-wise. I've given up skateboarding and snow skiing. <laughs> I've given up... I've given up scuba diving too. It's just I just um, I thought this was very good for the person who is out there doing the stuff. If you like the GoPros, I think you would just really this would be a great one for you. Okay. So that's uh that's the Olympus TG Tracker. We'll yeah. put links to all that in the show notes. So which yeah, is at coolphototools. I was gonna say you com. don't get all that stuff when you get a, no, a GoPro. That, that's true, you don't. You, you know. don't you get a get the opportunity to buy a bunch more accessories for yeah. it. Yeah. All right, 350? you know what time it is. Huh. What time is it? Is it time to go? It's time to go. We, All right. And actually, we're kind of over time. We just kind of really been talking and we can't <laughs> shut up. Yeah. It's going to be like, okay, well, cut, 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 cut Rhonda out of here, cut Rhonda. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. All right. I'm really, you said that on, on you know, the, uh, the podcast, but yet it only runs 29 minutes. <laughs> That's weird. We was talking like they were really over time. I don't, I don't see that. All right, everybody. Have a okay, great guys. week. guys. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. Bye. You've been listening to the Cool Photo Tools podcast. Sign up for our mailing list at coolphototools.com. Got a question? Send an email or MP3 audio file to info at coolphototools.com. Thanks for listening. Yeah.